Our speaker right now is going to do a lecture on the problem with internet quotes is that you can't always depend on their accuracy. That quote is from Abraham Lincoln, uh, 1864. So that is the title presented by Arlen Grossman. He's going to talk to you about quotes and how you can't always trust what you see or hear. And so let's bring Arlen up with a round of applause. Arlen Grossman. And we'll switch this over to Arlen. Yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't exactly call this a lecture, Mark, but uh, it should be fun anyway. As, we, as Mark mentioned, the, the uh, title of this is The Problem with Internet Quotes is You Can't Always Depend on Their Accuracy. That was said by Abraham Lincoln in 1864. But uh, probably a, a better subhead, uh, another subhead might be be skeptical of well-known quotations. A little background. Uh, I started writing this quotation quiz for the Monterey Herald about almost nine years ago. In March 2007, I think that's when Susan said the skeptics were starting, uh, Monterey County skeptics were starting in around 2007. And uh, <coughs> I've been doing it every week since then. M many of you may have seen it in uh, the Sunday Herald uh, for many years, up until the last year when, as the Herald kept shrinking, they took it out of the newspaper and they put it uh, online. And it's online every week. Uh, it's kind of neat, too, because they've done it in an interactive format. So you can see the question, you click, and see if you got the right answer. It's kind of like, it's kind of fun. So uh, you know, go on the Herald website. Usually it's uh, Sundays is when it usually appears. Or you could just <coughs> search within the website for quotes or quote quiz or something like that, and, and you'll find some of my prior quizzes. Uh, so over, over these uh, eight plus years, I've quoted about 4,500 quotes, uh, you know, very few of them repeats. And what I thought I would do today uh, is present a whole lot of quotes, ask you guys if you think you might know who said them, of course, you'll be wrong, but uh, <laughs> but but I think you, I consider you right if you uh, guess the usual source that people would say. All right, so don't feel you're, there's going to be any wrong answers, and and then I will uh, tell the source of the quote as I've done my research because what, what I found in, in doing these quotes over the years is uh, you know when I first started I didn't think a whole lot about double-checking everything, uh, researching each quote. And I found out so many of the quotes are not from the people who are, they're supposed to be from. So um, now I'm very careful, and I, and I do a lot of research, and I make sure that you know, the, the person that is quoting, that, that the quote is from the person who, uh, you know, I just get the right source of it. That's what I'm trying to do. I don't want to put out false information out there. So. Sterling has set up uh, a bunch of quotes, and uh, they're going to be back here, and you can look at them. Okay, there's our first quote. Winning isn't everything, it's the only thing. Some of you may know the actual person who said it, some of you may know who is supposed to have said it, but I'm going to ask you, the audience, who do you think is normally associated with that quote? Yes? I think it's been so far. Yes, that is uh, the common uh, thinking there. Most people would associate that with Vince Lombardi, the famous football coach for the Green Bay Packers. Uh, but in actuality, uh, it was said by, uh, by Red Sanders, the uh, football coach at UCLA, who used the, f the phrase in uh, various forms on multiple occasions, including in a 1955 Sports Illustrated article where he's quoted directly. So the actual person who said that was Red Sanders, not Vince Lombardi. Next quote. Let them eat cake. Brie Antoinette is the usual answer, so you're right about that. But actually it was never said by Marie Antoinette. Rousseau in his 1783 autobiography uh, relates that, quote, a great princess is said to have advised with regard to starving peasants, well, I'm not going to read the French here, but it's commonly translated as, if they have no bread, let them eat cake. 
It has been speculated that he was actually referring to Maria Teresa of Spain. And by the way, Rousseau's manuscript was written in 1767 when Marie Antoinette was only 12 and would not marry the future Louis XVI for another three years. Okay, so when you see that quote, let them eat cake. It's not Marie Antoinette. Go on to another quote. Elementary, my dear Watson. <laughs> I think you, most of you know who that's supposed to be said by. Who? Sherlock Holmes, Conan Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Um, in truth, this phrase was never uttered by the character in any of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's written works. Though Elementary and My Dear Watson both appear near the beginning of The Crooked Man, his story of, in 1893, it is the My Dear Watson that appears first, and Elementary is the sink is the succinct reply to Watson's ex exclamation a few lines of dialogue later. This is the closest these four immortal words ever appear together in this work. So, okay. The next one is a well-known quote. All that is necessary for the triumph of evil, that good men do nothing. Okay, I don't know, some of you may or may not know that quote. FDR. FDR. No. No. Who know this quote might say Edmund Burke. You guys heard of Edmund Burke? It's most likely a summary of the following quote in Burke's Thoughts on the Cause of Present Discontents. When bad men combine, the good must associate, else they will fall one by one, an unpitied sacrifice in a contemptible struggle. So that was not said by Edmund Burke. Next quote. Um, they don't know. Yeah, some of these quotes are just unknown. So, some people uh, thought that Alex de Tocqueville said it, but no, Alexis de Tocqueville. Um, okay, I disapprove of what you say, but I will defend to the death your right to say it. Voltaire is the usual answer, correct? Not my father. <laughs> right, no. As with many of these lines, the person to whom it is attributed, in this case Voltaire, perhaps would have wished he'd been so eloquent. This ringing pronouncement, however, derives not from the French philosopher's own pen, but from an early 20th century biography of him. Evelyn Beatrice Hall, in her 1906 uh, book, The Friends of Voltaire, was the one who actually uh, said that as, as something that is uh, close to his ideas, but not his actual words. Okay, here's the next quote. <laughs> <laughs> Most of you know that one. Jack Friday. <laughs> yeah. Joe, Joe, Friday. Oh, yeah. Joe Friday is the usual correct answer, right? But the, this, the best known quote from the Jack Webb series Dragnet, was never said by Sergeant Friday in any of the Dragnet radio or television series. Yeah, the quote was, however, uh, adopted in the 1987. Dragnet pseudo parody film starring Dan Aykroyd and Tom Hanks, in which Aykroyd played Sergeant Joe Friday. The, the actual correct versions are all we want are the facts, ma'am, or all we know are the facts, ma'am, but not quite like that. Didn't he say stick to the facts? He may have. I, I couldn't tell you for sure. Um, so a lot of these are not necessarily misattributed, uh, but more like misquoted, not, not the exact words, okay? Here's another familiar quote. There's a sucker born every minute. P.T. Barnum? Barnum is the usual. Yeah, it was actually said by one of his competitors talking about one of his exhibits. Not actually, was, wasn't actually said by P.T. Barnum. Well-behaved women rarely make history. That was... Uh, Actually, a lot of people misattribute that quote to Marilyn Monroe and maybe a few others, I don't know. But it's often attributed to actress Marilyn Monroe. This quote first appeared in an academic article written by Laurel Thatcher Ulrich, a professor at Harvard University. She was writing literally about the well-behaved and virtuous women who never made history. So there you go. That's the story in that quote. And some of you politicos out there might know this next one. A billion here, a billion there, there, and pretty soon you're talking real money. Trump. Yeah. 
<laughs> Dirksen is the common answer, so I'll give you credit for that. Um, but he, he occasionally used the, the phrase a, a billion here, a billion there in his speeches. But the latter appendage was apparently the work of a newspaper reporter. Dirksen noted that although he never said the whole comment, he liked the misquotation and never seriously objected to the misattribution. So he didn't actually say it, but he, you know, he, he liked it. <laughs> okay. Most folks are about as happy as they make up their minds to be. <laughs> yes, Abraham Lincoln is who that usually is attributed to. Correct. This quote was first attributed to Lincoln in 1914, 50 years after his death, <laughs> as part of a column in the Syracuse Herald written by Dr. Frank Crane about New Year's resolutions. Following that instance, it appeared in many other publications attributed to the president, but the, no evidence exists to suggest these attributions are correct. So there's no proof that he said it. There you go. Not Abraham Lincoln, actually. Uh, he's not the one that said it. Better to remain silent and be thought a fool than to speak and remove all doubt. You've all heard that one. Um, often Mark Twain is uh, the person who's thought to have said that, sometimes Abraham Lincoln. Um, earliest ascriptions to these famous figures appeared many years after his death. Somebody named Maurice Switzer is currently the top choice for corner, coiner of the expression, although future data may reveal alternative claimants. But no, that wasn't, uh, Lincoln wasn't Mark Twain. Okay, you all will know the next one. I cannot tell a lie. Yes, we all have heard that story, and you, you probably all uh, doubted it. Ironically, this... Uh, Iconic story about the value of honesty was invented by one of Washington's first biographers, an itinerant minister and bookseller named Mason Locke Weems. After Washington's death in 1799, people were anxious to learn about him, and Weems was ready to supply the demand. As he explained to the publisher in uh, January of 1800, Washington, you know, is gone. Millions are gaping to read something about him. My plan? I give his history sufficiently minute. I then go on to show that his unparalleled rise and elevation were due to his great virtues. Weems' biography, The Life of Washington, was first published in 1800 and was an instant bestseller. However, the cherry tree myth did not appear until the book's fifth edition was published in 1806. So there you go. He really didn't say that. You should know that one. The coldest winter I ever spent was a summer in San Francisco. Mark Twain is the usual answer. Plenty of Mark Twain's uh, most cited quotes from um, golf is a good walk spoiled to a lie can travel halfway around the world while the truth is still putting on its shoes weren't uttered by the humorist at all. This particular phrase doesn't appear in any of Twain's much poured over writing or correspondence. So Twain is one of those people that people like to attribute quotes to, but uh, often they're, and he's got a ton of really good ones, but a lot of them are not really his, and that's one of them. You can fool some of the people all of the time and all of the people some of the time, but you cannot fool all of the people all of the time. Lincoln, Lincoln is the usual answer. Um, some serious effort has gone into trying to determine whether Lincoln ever said this. And so far, the verdict is it seems unlikely. Lengthy pieces on the topic from the Abraham Lincoln Association uh, can be found here and there. Anyway, Ralph Keyes in his book, The Quote Verifier, points out that the phrase was tied to Lincoln by a 1904 book titled Abe Lincoln's Yarns and Stories, which is not considered a reliable source. So he didn't actually say that. Don't fire till you see the whites of their eyes. Stonewall Jackson is um, probably the most common answer, correct, at the Battle of New Orleans. But in fact, it originated with Colonel William Prescott, commander of George Washington's Continental Army, at the Battle of Bunker Hill. The full quotation is, don't fire till you see the whites of their eyes, then fire low. So, there you go.
Not Stonewall. Not, not Andrew Jackson. Yeah. Be who you are and say what you feel because those who mind don't matter and those who matter don't mind. That's a good it's quote. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people's moms, maybe. Um, anybody have any idea who might have said that? Dr. Seuss. Yes, Dr. Seuss would be the most common answer. And this quote is most famously misattributed to Dr. Seuss. Misattributed, I guess is the proper way to pronounce it. Some websites have recognized this misattribution but proceed to falsely reattribute it to Bernard Baruch. Uh, apparently Baruch said, said it when he was responding to a question about how he handled seating arrangements at a dinner party. However, this quote appears as early as 1938 in a London-based journal for municipal and county engineers. So not really Dr. Seuss. You all will recognize this one. Go west, young man. Horace Greeley. Horace Greeley, of course. And he is generally credit, credited with having coined the often quoted phrase, go west, young man. But many observers point to John B. L. Sewell, S-O-U-L-E, in the Indiana Journalist as the actual originator of the phrase. Although Greeley used the phrase, go west, young man, go west, in an editorial in 1865, uh, Soule in, indeed had written Go West Young Man and Grow Up with the Country earlier in an editorial. Greeley? Not really. Not the first one. Um, next quote. Everybody talks about the weather but nobody does anything about it. Okay. Tw I heard Twain and Twain would be the common answer. Correct. But it wasn't Twain. The preponderance of the evidence indicates that Charles Dudley Warner crafted the weather maxim and said it to multiple individuals. Charles Dudley Warner was an editor at the Hartford Courant in the time period, and the reference, re, uh, respectfully quoted, claims that Warner wrote the editorial. Warner was a well-known author and editor in the 1800s, and he was a neighbor, good friend, and collaborator with Mark Twain. Hope you all took a shower this morning. Cleanliness is next to godliness. And where do you usually think that is Mom. quoted? Mom. Mom, yeah. I think most people would say the Bible, but it wasn't in the Bible. It was coined by John Wesley, the 18th century evangelist who founded Methodism in 1791. John Wesley made a reference to the expression in one of his sermons in the form we use it today. Wesley wrote, Slovenliness is no part of religion. Cleanliness is indeed next to godliness. There you go. God helps those who help themselves. Another typical quote that people think came from the Bible. Every pastor, every murder got something wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was actually in uh, Aesop's fable or a story of similar origin, sometimes featuring a saint, sometimes featuring a farmer, sometimes featuring Hercules, speaking to a man whose cart is stuck in a ditch. Aesop's fable. Okay, we're in the political season. You'll know this one. If you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. Donald Trump? No. <laughs> Martha Stewart. Nixon? Martha Stewart. No, not Martha Stewart. <laughs> All right. You guys probably recognize that from uh, Harry Truman. And Truman used this phrase, but it did not originate with him. The Missouri native borrowed it from Eugene Purcell, a Missouri judge and former colleague. Truman also is well known for the sign he kept on his desk, the buck stops here, but he did not originate that pithy phrase either. Okay. Be the change you wish to see in the world. Gandhi. Gandhi, yes, that is the uh, usual answer. Uh, but of course, you've got to be skeptical, and that's wrong. Um, you've seen this everywhere on posters, on your Twitter and Facebook feed. It might even be one of your favorite quotes. But according to uh, a mini investigation of this quote in the New York Times, there is no evidence of Gandhi ever saying this. Be yourself, everyone is already taken. And uh, who, any guesses on who may have said that one? Sounds like a homework card. 
Ryan? It's often uh, mis misattributed to uh, Oscar Wilde. But uh, this quote is unsourced and nowhere to be found in Oscar Wilde's writings. It is likely an abridged interpretation of Oscar Wilde's thoughts and personality in the form of a misquotation. First they ignore you, then they laugh at you, and then they attack you, and then you win. And this kind of setting here, the Peace and Justice Center, and some of you may have known that. A lot of people would attribute that to uh, Gandhi. This line is probably the best summary of Gandhi's philosophy. Um, as you get in 16 words, but there's no, no evidence that the great soul ever said this. We don't know uh, where this uh, quote came from, but it is strictly similar to something that the trade unionist Nick, Nicholas Klein gave in a 1918 address to the amalgamated clothing workers of America in Baltimore. He said, first they ignore you, then they ridicule, ridicule you, and then they attack you and want to burn you. And often they build monuments to you. And that is what is going to happen to the amalgamated clothing workers of America. Okay. Sometimes the cigar is just a cigar. Um, this quote is often attributed to uh, who? Freud. Freud, yes. To Sigmund Freud to show that even a famous psychoanalyst can admit that, that not everything has a profound meaning. However, no variation of this quote ever appears in any of his writings. It appears to have been falsely attributed to him several years after his death. This, I think, is the last one here. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. I heard uh, Einstein out there, and that is the most uh, common person who this is attributed to. Although falsely attributed to a number of famous thinkers, Albert Einstein is most often associated with this quote, Ben Franklin too. Um, there's no scholarly, scholarly consensus as to who actually coined the phrase. Though one theory holds it first appeared in approval version of the 1981 book Narcotics Anonymous, which includes the sentence, insanity is repeating the same mistakes and expecting different results. Narcotics Anonymous? Yeah. Narcotics Anonymous, yes. Huh. Thank you. <laughs> any comments, any questions, Glenn? I, I just want to know if there's anything um, that was ever attributed to Mark Twain that's accurate. Uh, <laughs> quite a few things. He, he, yeah, he was, uh, he was a great source of quotes, but generally when, these, when it comes to quotes, people like to use familiar names. And so they, they would you know, say, oh, that sounds like something Twain would say, so they would use it. Yeah. Yeah. How uh, how do we, how how are you able to verify that the, the information you're presenting is the correct information? Rather than <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's a good question. Uh, yes. Multiple uh, multiple checks on that. I, I try to get multiple sources, and uh, and after a while, I sort of learn which are the most reliable, and uh, you know which ones I can really trust. And there, there's, a, there's a couple good uh, uh, internet uh, quote sites that talk about mi misattributed quotes. And uh, I, I use those and, and many other sources, but I, I try to be accurate. Yeah, James. The uh, Freud, uh, the one that was attributed to Freud about yeah. the cigar, I've heard that that was not in his writings, but it was in a lecture where somebody, you know, kind of jabbing at him said that. If you, did you look into that aspect of it? I did not hear about that. I didn't find anything you know, about that. In a classroom lecture, some kind of a public <coughs> lecture, and somebody thought they were going to jab at him, you know, make, make a point. So, I mean, right. a I'll, I'll look into that and let you know. Yes, ma'am. Aren't some of these just the reflection of the era, the zeitgeist? For instance, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen, that was probably said Hundreds of thousands of years ago, by women talking to their kids, get out of here. Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> People like to attribute those kind of things to famous people, but yeah, a lot of them have been said 
prior to that and other occasions many times and maybe by common ordinary people but that doesn't sound as exciting yes what's the best way to get great fake quotes attributed to me <laughs> uh, <laughs> just start start saying them and uh, hopefully they'll catch on I don't know <laughs> yeah and another thing about uh, another thing about these quotes uh, they're often misquoted because people like to simplify the quotes so they might be long and people will put them you know tighten them up a bit and then attribute it to their their one of their famous people favored people and then you have a misattributed quote Okay, yes. I wonder if I could add one to it. Please. Uh, I, attributed, I attributed this to a bard in uh, Caucasus Mountain in the Republic of Georgia. And it was part of the song that he was singing. Jenshina et a jenshina, no cigareta et a cigareta. A woman is a woman, but a cigarette is a cigarette. <laughs> Okay, so that predated Freud by quite a bit. <laughs> okay. Okay. Shall we move on? Let's give my hand for Arlen. Thank you very much.